So why consider energy and power monitoring? What I hope to show you in this brief video is that by monitoring energy and power, you have the opportunity to reduce your operational costs as well as improve machine health. And to help you do that, I'll be introducing you to a couple of products, the Groove Epic Power Module and the Rio Emu. So with that, let's get right into it. With energy, it's financial. Once you have visibility into your energy consumption, you can start to identify opportunities for savings. With power, it's operational. Power profile is often an indicator of machine health. So excessive power draw, sometimes combined with other parameters, can be an indication of equipment malfunction, degradation of equipment, or the need for equipment maintenance. I think we can agree on the following statement. A typical manager doesn't approve a major expenditure without a detailed accounting of where the money is spent. So the question is, why isn't energy accounted for in the same detailed way? In industrial facilities, on the operational technology side, energy is often considered overhead. The plant manager, technician, or automation engineer is not responsible for the energy expenditure in their operation. This is not anybody's fault. This is just how it is. And what I'm hoping to do is change that mindset. So let's take a look at a typical factory or process plant. What you have is IT equipment and software. You have your process machinery and equipment. You have labor and you have raw materials. These things together make up your costs of operations. So where in that is the energy expenditure? Well, the utility bill usually goes to somebody in accounting. That person can be in a different department, a different building, or even in a different country. And there's no correlation between the plant floor and the bill that is being paid to the utility company. Let's take a minute to talk about the energy bill. For medium and large industrial customers, there are typically two components to the energy bill. One is consumption in kilowatt hours. That's straightforward. That's the amount of energy used during the billing period. The other many people are unaware of, that's called demand charge. And what that is, is a tariff applied to the peak power in kilowatts used during the month. It's usually measured in 15 minute intervals and that highest value is taken and applied to the whole month. That demand charge is often as much as or even more than the consumption charge. A few other things to be aware of on the energy bill. Industrial customers are often charged on what's called a time of use or TOU. That's a different rate depending on the time of day. There's often also a seasonal component. So you can start to see where the opportunities might be in monitoring your energy. So the opportunity is energy awareness. The problem we're addressing is a lack of energy visibility. The implication of that is higher than necessary operational costs. Acquiring data helps you understand. You can analyze that data to eliminate assumptions and identify trouble spots. You can take that data and try to correlate operations in your facility to the consumption and implement a strategy. Another concept I wanted to make you aware of is energy intensity. That is the amount of energy used per product produced. So a lot of forward thinking companies are actually including the amount of energy used to produce a given product into the bill of materials. The bottom line, and I'm sure you've heard this before, you can only manage what you can measure. So let me summarize the justification for energy monitoring. Manufacturing and process plants must realize that energy costs can be managed the same as all other costs within a facility. And reducing energy costs may offer one of the best opportunities a company has to improve profits. An important point I want to make though is you have to collaborate with the person who pays the electricity bill or with the person or department who has accountability for the energy spent in your operation. Your company may also have sustainability initiatives and programs. It's also a good idea to coordinate with these people to help in their efforts to reduce carbon footprint. Okay, so where do you start? We recommend a top-down approach. 
Start with the building mains, then progress to subpanels and individual machines after that if possible. What you want to do is identify your loads, largest to smallest. With a product like the Rio Emu, as you'll see, even connecting to and monitoring very small loads is very cost effective. So this approach, as you go from larger loads to smaller, it's a continuous process. You make your connection, monitor your energy, identify problems, make corrections, and then progress to the next level of granularity and start over again, even getting down to individual machines. This approach is proven, and it works. Here at the Opto 22 factory, we implemented this strategy, and we were able to reduce our peak demand 27%, and that combined with reductions in our consumption, we saved the company approximately $100,000 per year. This case study, along with others, are available on our website. Please take a look. Let's move on to power monitoring. What is the opportunity there? As I mentioned before, power draw is often an indicator of machine health. Excessive power draw can be an indication of problems like lubrication, filter pressures, bearing or seal wear, motor shaft misalignment, or motor winding deterioration. Low power factor can also indicate problems. As I'm sure you're aware, there is a trend toward predictive maintenance. Traditional machine maintenance was either reactive or run to fail, preventative, which was scheduled, or condition-based, which was monitoring a single value. As I'm sure you're aware, the trend is toward predictive maintenance. So predictive maintenance can minimize and plan downtime, production losses, and repair costs. So what is driving this trend? Probably no surprise, the IoT. In this recent data, you can see that predictive maintenance is one of the top 10 use cases for the IoT, and it's trending upwards. Further, when it comes to artificial intelligence, predictive maintenance is the number one use case, and power is an important parameter for analytics of machine health. So there you have it, monitoring energy and power. What is the first step? It's connecting to the load. Let's move on now and talk about the Groove products that can help you do that. We've got two energy and power monitoring products. So the first is the EPIC power module. This is the module that is part of the Groove EPIC system, which is our edge programmable industrial controller. It slides into the EPIC backplane just like any other I.O. module. The other is the Rio EMU. The Rio can be remote I.O. to another control system or can stand alone without the need for a PLC. So a few basics about these products. They're designed to connect to three phase loads. The voltage connection can be up to 600 volts directly, and they can handle either a delta or a Y configuration. For the current connection, they accept either 5 amp or 0.333 VAC current transformer outputs. There are 18 parameters per phase plus energy totals. Just a word about current transformers. There are two types, solid core and split core. We recommend the split core because they can clamp around the feeder wires without having to disconnect them and are thus easy to install. These are typically available up to 2000 amps on the primary. Opto 22 stocks up to 600 amp units. The secondary or output signal of these units is a 0.333 volts AC. Some CTs have a current on the secondary, like 5 amps. So this is what a typical installation might look like. We have our pump and motor, and we have the Rio Emu connected to the three-phase load. So we bring back the voltage tap and the output from the CTs directly into the Rio Emu, and with very simple configurations, energy and power data is available. This is an example of a Groove Epic system with a four-slot chassis connected to four loads. So let's think about an energy monitoring use case. You could have up to 16 power monitoring modules connected to loads in close proximity and bring that data into one Groove Epic. Further, since the Epic can run a control scheme, imagine if, based on the data, you wanted to implement a strategy such as load sharing or load shedding. Now let's think about a machine health use case. So you could use a Groove Epic power module to bring in power data, but the other I.O. slots to bring in other parameters such as vibration and temperature. 
This data combined could help feed an artificial intelligence or machine learning algorithm. So what about the data? That's where the real magic happens. Look, monitoring energy and power is not new, but what is different today is the incredible amount of IT tools available to historize that data, visualize that data, and perform analytics on that data. And onboard the Rio Emu is a tremendous tool set to help you do that easily. These include Node Red, Spark Plug MQTT Transmission, Secure Shell Access, and a RESTful API, to name a few. With the Groove Epic, take those same tools and add into it the capability to run Inductive Automation's Ignition Edge as well as a control program via CodeSys or Pack Control. So why Opto22 Groove? There's a lot of power monitoring products on the market, some of them even very low cost. So let's remember what makes the Groove different. Number one is cybersecurity. There's no other power monitoring product on the market that has a fully configurable firewall, encrypted communications, and authenticated user access. As just discussed, the support for IT-friendly protocols and data formats. And finally, the edge compute capabilities through things like Node-RED and the Secure Shell access. One other thing I wanted to point out. The EPIC Power Module and the Rio Emu are not power quality devices. Recall the problems that these products were designed to address, reducing operating costs and improving machine health. So with that, I'd like to leave you with one final thought. What is the promise of the IoT? It's data. Data can be an asset to the enterprise. Energy and power data can help you reduce operational costs and improve machine health and be a part of your digital transformation journey. Hopefully I've given you some ideas on why you might consider energy and power monitoring and how to go about doing that. If you'd like more information, please visit our website where you can also engage with an engineer over online chat, email, or phone. Thank you.